We recently covered the impressive ancient dwellings known as dolmens, which can be found littering most of the European countryside. Enormous ancient structures, which we feel were left by a surviving, less capable branch of an earlier civilization, still possessing advanced knowledge allowing them to build with such stones. Surviving remnants of the group, we also believe, were responsible for the masterfully constructed ancient ruins which can be found upon the same continents. Additionally, this era within human history was the inspiration for an animated TV show, namely the Flintstones. Curiously, the Flintstones, dubbed the Modern Stone Age Family, could easily be mistaken for a lost advanced civilization. Did the makers of the Flintstones know something we are currently unraveling regarding the builders of the Flintstones' homes, namely the dolmens? Or is it all a mere coincidence? Some of these dolmens still possess as yet unexplained evidence which flies in the face of academics worldwide. Sites such as the Dolmen of Menga, found near Malaga in Spain. This massive dolmen, one of the largest megalithic sites in Europe, is a prime example of the unexplained features which defy current explanation. The dolmen is 902 feet long, 20 feet wide, and 115 feet in height. It was built with 32 megaliths, the largest of which weighing over 200 tons. Nearby is another impressive dolmen, known as De Vera, discovered between 1903 and 1905 by brothers Antonio and Jose Vera of Antiquera. This site also possesses some of the most impressive megaliths to be found in any dolmens anywhere in Europe. Who built these incredible structures? How did they build them? La roche -Fille, in the French department of ille vilaine in the Brittany region, was named after a legend claiming that the stones were brought by fairies, this clearly inspired by their inexplicable nature. A name of fairy rock was given to many French dolmens or covered walkways. Regardless of whether our own theory is correct, the still surviving features of many of these ancient dolmens is clearly in direct contradiction with attested theory. Further alternative study is desperately needed of structures we find highly compelling. There are many enigmatic, unexplained ancient mysteries which we have covered here on our channel. Many mysterious ruins which are slowly revealing their secrets to us. However, what must be the most intriguing of the historical subcategories has to be the Oparts, out-of-place artifacts that have been found all over Earth. These mystifying items are the only subject within the field which can shed their own very unique lights upon the distant past and sometimes hard-to-believe possibilities attached to their ages. The island of Samos within Greece is home to a number of these particular artifacts. 1.5 kilometers off the coast of Turkey, this small island has a big history. Within the island's capital museum is a wide range of very impressive artifacts. The most interesting among the collection is undoubtedly the strange bronze artifact which according to academia, merely depicts a strange form of unknown carriage that would have once been pulled by horses. However, some also believe that the strange animals are actually depicting a form of periscope and that the entire artifact is actually that of an ancient submarine. Additionally, there also exists another amazing artifact that we felt was worth a mention, found within private collection. Originally a religious idol, what do you think this wooden artifact is depicting? Could it actually be that of modern day paragliders, somehow sent back in time? seen and depicted by this once ancient people as a religious vision? It's an incredible, if rather imaginative thought, but it is testament to such artifacts intriguing nature. There are many incredible, out-of-place artifacts that can be found all over Earth. Each one just waited to spark our interest. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. The chronological dating of our technological development and capabilities within antiquity are often correlated and judged upon the developments within heat management of metal refinery. For example, 
one of our strongest arguments against the modern-day, attested view that ancient Egyptians were the builders of the Sphinx, the pyramids, the tombs, etc., is partly based upon their lack of ability in heating a furnace to a sufficient enough temperature to create the hardened metal tools needed to penetrate and carve such hard stones. The Nanjing Belt is an extremely rare find that has unsurprisingly vanished from public view, preventing any further analysis, although the existence of these artifacts was officially noted in several places and was indeed analyzed by several specialists. What is amazing regarding the Nanjing Belt is its age, but most importantly, what it is made of. In 1952, two tombs were found within Yixing City in China. One of the tombs also had a clear date inscribed upon its inside. It stated that they were buried on the 20th of September of the 7th year of Yuang Kang, the late general of Zhao, 1700 years ago. When the belt was initially retrieved, it was sent for analysis at the chemistry department of Nanjing University. The results were astonishing. 10% copper, 5% manganese, and the remaining was 85% pure aluminum. However, the development of aluminum is a very modern achievement, requiring extreme heats to smelt, heats that we believe were impossible to manage at the time. Alumina is dissolved in molten cryolite at 1000 degrees C, with a melting point of pure alumina being 2054 degrees Celsius. So, the question persists, how could such an artifact exist? A question once taken up in the West by three scholars, Butler, Glidewell, and Pritchard, at St. Andrews University. The abstract sums up their work, quote, Pieces of aluminum, supposedly parts of a set of belt ornaments, were found in a Jing Dynasty tomb during excavations in the 1950s. The authenticity of these finds was questioned at the time in view of the technology required to isolate aluminum from its ore. Examination of the thermodynamic requirement for this process demonstrates unequivocally that the temperature required for this process is greatly in excess of that possible with Jing Dynasty technology, and so the finds cannot be authentic. Unfortunately, again, we find ourselves in familiar waters. So-called scholars, three in fact, with a conclusion based solely upon historical assumptions. Unfortunately, the artifact was seemingly too controversial for some, and it has disappeared, sadly, quite possibly forever. During a previous video titled Secret Missions into the Great Pyramid, in which we covered the most bizarre of artifacts once found in a seemingly inaccessible shaft, eventually discovered to be an entry shaft into the now-named Queen's Chamber. Just how this bronze ball, hook, and several bizarre fragments of wood found their way into the pyramids is unknown. We shared the fact that the wood had become conveniently lost, thus preventing any future dating of the artifacts or indeed this possible attempt to have once penetrated the pyramid far before the Spanish invasion of Egypt, their modern rediscovery, or indeed before the entrance to the pyramid was located. However, in a rather strange yet fortunate twist of fate, sitting within a collection of ancient Asian relics within Scotland, an Egyptian archaeologist was shocked to rediscover these cedar fragments, once mislabeled and thus never classified, lost for almost 70 years, yet refound within an old cigar box. One has to wonder, with our prior hypothesis, and indeed the convenience of the wood somehow becoming lost, was this a deliberate act by someone? Possibly someone who realized the controversy attached to this artifact. What we find most compelling, however, and a possible motive to hide such an artifact are the now-realized result of modern carbon dating, showing that the wood dates to somewhere between 3341 and 3094 BC, long before the claimed construction of the pyramid. Furthermore, although many have claimed that counterweights and timber structures were utilized in the construction of the pyramids, this wood not only predates the claimed date of their creation, but does so by some 1 to 2,000 years. So any mainstream explanation for this dating anomaly is severely lacking, 
However, it fits perfectly with our original hypothesis and is indicative not only of a far earlier date of construction, but could indeed have been a possible successful attempt at penetrating the pyramid's deepest inner chambers, simply due to the mysterious yet impressive location in which these enigmatic artifacts were found and subsequently retrieved from. Curatorial assistant Abir Aladani found the fragments of wood as she perused the Asia section of the archives of the University of Aberdeen. Quote, Once I looked into the numbers of our Egypt records, I instantly knew what it was and that it had effectively been hidden in plain sight in the wrong collection. I'm an archaeologist and have worked on digs in Egypt, but I never imagined it would be here in northeast Scotland that I'd find something so important to the heritage of my own country." End quote. As you can imagine, we find the wooden artifacts highly compelling. We have come to a point in the age of our civilization, thanks to the efforts of countless individuals who, in the pursuit of truth, specifically the reality of a lost past, a lost civilization once possessing now lost technologies, has finally arrived on the main stage of debate. It has come to a point of critical mass. Either having been made aware of their existence, or indeed realizing or stumbling upon this hidden truth independently, regardless, we have uncovered an immense array of proof to not only confirm their existence, but a proof now all but overwhelming to argue with. The entire planet literally littered with impossible remnants, left by what we believe was not only one, but part of an array of lost civilizations, several of which being past global superpowers. Yet I digress. The artifacts found throughout Giza, for example, demonstrate a seemingly impossible ability to move and carve stones with the tools mainstream academics would put in the builder's hands, making such creations impossible. There exists, within the museum's archives themselves, a smorgasbord of vases and stone cores, lay for all to see, each suggest that they were not only the result of some form of advanced lathe work, but other far superior and powerful tools far ahead of that of the copper chisel, which to claim was the culprit, we feel is now nothing more than an offense to one's intelligence, when the evidence to suggest otherwise is in front of one's face at the same time. We have previously covered the vases supposedly made using nothing but copper in the past, specifically the trilobe disc. Yet the many other members of the collection, known as the Saqqara vases, not only demonstrate a mastery of lathe work, but some are so impossibly delicate that when attempted to be explained with modern paradigm, one is left utterly baffled. What lost technologies or techniques were used in the creation of these vases? Article 99 from the Anorthosite Nice catalog, but one example of this extraordinary ability to either cut or possibly mold these stone vases. With wafer-thin edges and a shape formed with the lip, demonstrating they would be impossible to recreate even with the advanced technology of a lathe. Who made these seemingly impossible artifacts, along with the unmissable Great Pyramids, highly compelling? Elongated skulls, along with their origins, are undoubtedly one of the most heavily debated areas within modern archaeology. Many independently funded researchers who have explored and subsequently exposed vast arrays of unusual and as yet inexplicable features surrounding a particularly few examples of these intriguing and incredibly puzzling artifacts. For regardless of known head-binding practices, a well-studied and historically an extremely common practice, thus one which modern science has an extensive understanding of, including the effect this had on the shape of the skull makes any skull which endured these traditions are easily to identify post-mortem. The most commonly found incorporated wooden boards pressed upon the head, creating large flat areas along the frontal lobes. Pressing the brow area of the skull upward, this malformation creates a crease or bulge near the normal napping areas of the skull, as seen in these photos of remains currently claimed as a suspected alien found in Croatia. 
Yet due to this knowledge of malformation, we can easily identify that it is indeed of a homo sapien. This so-called crease is easily identifiable upon bone structure. However, as previously mentioned, there exists a particular few whose remains not only have an elongated cranium, but the individuals in which they belong not only possess said craniums undeniably formed via natural processes, but are identical in appearance to millions of witness testimonies describing what we all now know as the greys. With huge eyes, long wide craniums, frames of a tiny stature, and micro-thin pelvis, remains of tiny humanoids, possibly visitors to our planet, who may have crashed here, subsequently marooned upon our planet, is an account which has been told before. We have in the past explored the compelling story surrounding the Dropa discs, an ancient upar that, according to a number of individuals who have examined and tested them, tell this exact tale. Long barrows, granges, earthworks, and henges found across the United Kingdom all have rumors surrounding long-headed skulls being covered up after having been found at the sites. Passionately protected from trespassers, a vast number of the largest barrows have never been opened. 12-ton stones blocking the entrances, clearly suggesting they are buildings of tremendous importance, but without enormous multi-million pound machinery, permits, and most importantly, permission from the landowners, conveniently, all these incredible undug sites are set on private lands. We will probably never find what's inside, but many rumors abound, like those which circle Bella's nap, tales which tell of more elongated skulls exhumed from the surrounding Earth during a normal archaeological exploration. Yet regardless of this seemingly meticulous suppression in the UK, an incredible find has nonetheless been unearthed in Crimea. Many of the intriguing features of the remains are the same characteristics which gave rise to the elongated skulls of Peru's popularity. Yet this skull still possesses its tiny, complete skeleton. The eye sockets which once housed the creature's eyes were enormous, and although the entire frame of the creature is of a small size, the lack of a pronounced pelvis would have made them very slender and would have emphasized the size of the cranium. It is a strong candidate for the only complete elongated skull remains in existence. We find the elongated skull highly compelling. In 1932, gold prospectors searching within the San Pedro Mountains of Wyoming would make a groundbreaking discovery, a find which for a brief period of time exposed to the world the past existence of a group of people, a secret, unexplainable race, which has been successfully covered up for over a century. Cast into the realm of folklore, this group of people could be attributed to tales of gnomes or hobbits. The once-native Crow people spoke of their ferocious nature for many hundreds of years. No taller than 36 inches in height, According to William R. Corliss, in his 1978 book Ancient Man, a Handbook of Puzzling Artifacts, citing the Anthropological Institute, Journal 6, 100, 1876, an ancient little people graveyard of vast proportions was once found in Coffee County. It was estimated that there were as many as 100,000 separate individuals buried there, and in 1932, Two gold prospectors would thankfully expose the existence of the little people of Priori Mountain to the world. Deep within a mine on the mountain, they discovered a secret lair, a tomb, somehow placed deep within the rock face. Within this tomb, they found the mummified remains of a tiny humanoid. Now known as Pedro, according to Dr. Henry Shapiro, an anthropologist from the American Museum of Natural History, Along with the several x-rays he made, proving his authenticity, Pedro was 65 years old when he died, and he had unfortunately suffered a terrible fall, which had dislocated several of the vertebrae in his back. It seemed to Dr. Shapiro, a head wound that he had apparently suffered some short time after may have been the result of his relinquished life, in a curious act of mercy by his fellow tribe members. 
The Crow tribe attest to these tiny people once being gifted warriors, feared by all those in the surrounding areas. They told of the little people murdering all who ventured near them, even decimating a group of 200 strong warriors who mistakenly trespassed into their territories during the night. Pedro ended up in a pharmacy in Wyoming, and for seven years he was a successful local attraction. One day, when an unusual businessman offered to buy him, after apparently paying a very large sum, the man disappeared with Pedro, and he has never been seen of again. The only existing mummy of the little people, it seems, was successfully confiscated during the late 1950s. To this day, it is not known where Pedro is, although for the person who locates his current residence, we have been made aware of a substantial cash prize for the person who can bring him back into the public arena, or at least enable further testing. If you know where Pedro is, please do get in touch. There is someone with a rather large present waiting for you. Hey guys, so although the idea of leprechauns and fairies is considered to be, well, a fairy tale, there does exist a handful of very compelling artifacts, unearthed over the years, which have suggested the existence of an elusive race of tiny people. And although they were presumably wingless, judging by the relics found, they would be so small they could indeed be considered to look just like modern representations of fairies. A worn-in tiny shoe, found by a remote sheep farmer on an ancient trail within the Bira Peninsula in Ireland. Black in color, the craftsmanship that had gone into creating the tiny piece of footwear for our giant hands would have been highly impressive. He was amazed to find that the shoe clearly shows signs of wear, particularly at the heel. In fact, although tiny, this shoe had indeed been well worn in by someone no bigger than a pencil. The farmer eventually gave the shoe to the local doctor and eventually it was passed to the Somerville family. The current whereabouts of the shoe is unknown, although it is rumored that it is in Munster in Ireland. At one point it was examined by scientists at Harvard University. They found it was indeed hand stitched by tiny hands using tiny stitches and well crafted tiny eyelets. It was also discovered to be made from mouse skin. The belief in fairies or tiny humans is known as fairy faith. It is still found throughout Europe and the UK. In some parts of the world such as Iceland, fairy faith is still very strong. Artifacts left or given by these tiny people have been documented on several occasions. The fairy woman's cloth of burst of fijal is but one example of a gift from these tiny beings. According to the legend attached to the tiny, unique relic, the wife of the district police superintendent and public prosecutor at the farm of Bursta Fijal in Vopnaf Jordur in the east of Iceland received this cloth as payment from a fairy woman whom she had midwifed. The cloth is now in the National Museum in Reykjavik. Thor Magnusson, who is the president's custodian of antiquities, says certainly it's a unique cloth. There are some other gifts too up and down the Atlantic coast of Europe, including the flag of Maclod, kept today at Dunvegan Castle. The most famous object is known as the Luck of Eden Hall, a cup that was won fairly from fairies by a member of the Musgrove family. Today the cup stands in the Victoria and Albert Museum. The cup, which is astoundingly beautiful, is surprisingly of eastern origins. Although many of the things mentioned could and have been put down to elaborate yet entertaining hoaxes, the fairy or leprechaun shoe found in the remotes of Ireland is one of those extremely rare artifacts that does indeed seem authentic. This may be why it is hidden away from certain individuals who would probably prefer it disappeared forever. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care.